Uh, what a fantastic morning we've had. I'm so proud to be part of the first party in Australia to have a Reconciliation Action Plan. Neil Kinnock said at the Welsh Labor Party conference in 1987, why am I the first Kinnock in a thousand generations to be able to get to university? Why is Glenys the first woman in her family in a thousand generations to be able to get to university? Was it because our predecessors were thick? Does anybody really think they didn't get what we had because they didn't have the talent or the strength or the endurance or the commitment? Of course not. It was because there was no platform on which they could stand. This reminds me of the story of so many people in this room. My own parents uh, basically left school uh, in primary school because they, uh, their education was interrupted by the Second World War. We know that intelligence uh, aptitude, the capacity to hard, uh, for hard work is not confined to certain suburbs or certain families or certain people, but uh, opportunity really is. Abilities spread evenly across our Australian community, but opportunity isn't. That's why we are so committed to making sure that our education system is a world-class education system for every Australian child. We are investing in education because it's one of the most important things we can do for our economy, but it's also one of the most important things we can do for individual Australians. We want Australian children to be the best educated in the world with 15 years of world-class schooling and affordable and excellent TAFE and universities at the end of that. We want every child to have the chance to flourish no matter where they're born, who their parents are. We know that 90% of a child's brain development happens in the first five years, and I really have to pay tribute to Amanda Rishworth and her excellent work in making sure that we commit to universal preschool for three- and four-year-olds. Of course, uh, we believe in parental choice in education, but for parents really to have true choice, we need to make sure that our public schools are the best in the world. There's no real choice when we starve our public schools of funds. And that's why we've said in our first Labor budget, we will commit to a $14 billion increase in funding for public schools over the decade. Now, we're happy to uh, restore funding to Catholic and independent schools as the government has done, but we say we also need to restore the funding they have cut from the system that educates two out of three of every Australian ch uh, child. And I've got to say, it's been really great to see Dan Andrews and James Molino stick it to the federal government, stand up to them, stand up against the funding cuts. Our extra funding means that schools will be able to offer a wider range of choices. Of course, all the basics, reading, writing, math, science, coding, but more choice, music, arts, uh, languages, uh, drama, uh, all of the things that give children the opportunity to experience a much broader world. More funding means an earlier identification of kids who are falling behind and the one-on-one -on -one help they need to catch up. It means more extension for kids who are gifted and talented. It means more support for our teachers uh, and school staff to continue to upgrade their skills, to, uh, to work together uh, to upgrade the skills of starting teachers, uh, to provide mentoring to those starting teachers, for uh, teachers who are very experienced to spread uh, their experience with the other teachers at their school. We want every child learning every day and we want every school to be a welcoming and supportive environment. That means restoring the funding cut from disability education in our schools. It means giving every child the chance to thrive in any school they choose to attend. We are committed to closing the gap in Indigenous education as well. This government has cut billions of dollars from TAFE and from universities 
we will go back to our system of uncapped places at university. That's a $10 billion commitment over the next decade. Because if you are prepared to work hard and study hard and invest the time, there should be a place in university for you. And TAFE shouldn't ever be a uh, second rung choice for Australians. Our technical and vocational education system has been run down by successive Liberal governments at state and territory level and by the Liberals uh, in Canberra. We have 140,000 fewer apprentices and trainees today than we had when the Liberals first came to power. And we've got occupations that have been on the skills shortage list the whole time the Liberals have been in government. And we've still got youth unemployment. How do these things coexist? How does the government allow us to have occupations on the skills shortage list, high youth unemployment and cuts to TAFE and vocational education? If elected, Labor commits to a once-in-a-generation review of our post-secondary school system because we want a strong, world-class university system side by side with a strong, world-class TAFE system with public TAFE at the centre of it. Thank you, delegates. I commend the chapter to you.